With energy prices soaring, most homeowners are looking for ways to reduce their energy consumption. Making your home more energy efficient not only saves money, it reduces the amount of greenhouse gases you create. So, where do you start? I'm Herb Weisbaum, the Consumer Man, a contributing editor at Checkbook.org. Welcome to Consumerpedia at Checkbook.org. We're the nonprofit that helps consumers select services, avoid trouble, and save money. Because we don't accept any advertising or take money from any business we recommend, you can rely on Checkbook.org to be completely independent and objective. Now, here's the host of Consumerpedia, America's consumer expert, the consumer man, Herb Weisbaum. Checkbook did a deep dive into what you can do around your house to save energy, from simple and cheap but effective fixes to upgrades that require some upfront spending but quickly pay for themselves with lower utility bills. We're going to share some of those ideas and look at some really expensive projects you may want to consider. They will minimize your energy use but may not pay for themselves for years down the road. Kevin Brassler, Checkbook's executive editor, is here to run down some of your options. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Herb. You know, the great thing about saving energy is not only are you doing something good for the planet, but you're also saving money. I mean, that's the bottom line. It costs less to waste less energy. Yeah, that's right. I mean, lots of people are interested in saving energy at home these days, either because they want to you know, reduce their pollution output, uh, reduce their use of fossil fuels, and for other reasons, to save money also. And while so many of the devices we have are so much more energy efficient than they were in the past, we have so darn many of them that uh, we can really be running up quite a bill. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the good news is that appliances like dishwashers and dryers and heating and air conditioning equipment, there have been lots of improvements. Uh, their windows, for example, have to be double glazed these days. So there's been a lot of improvements in terms of the stuff we buy that uses energy or, or wastes energy in the case of windows, that we've actually flattened out our energy usage over the last 25 years or so, even though our population has grown, even though the number of homes have grown, and, and on average, the homes have gotten a lot bigger bigger. So that's the good news. And also some of the appliances are on all the time. These instant on TVs and all these devices, they're always sucking a little bit of energy no matter what. Yeah. And so the bad news is that while appliances and other devices have become a lot more efficient, uh, that's the good news. The bad news is that, you know, despite all these gains in efficiency, that most of our homes still waste lots and lots of energy. There's actually a lot you can do to help that. And let's talk about that. You know, a lot of these segments say things like turn down the thermostat and put on a sweater, but there are a lot of other things that maybe you didn't think about that you could do that actually could reduce your energy bill. So let's talk about some of them. Yeah, and, and turning down your thermostat will have a big impact on on your energy use. And I think also a lot of people, when they hear about oh, ways to save on energy at home, a lot of people, the default ideas are things like solar energy and you know geothermal heating and doing you know a, a complete remodel of your home to make it energy efficient really expensive projects and those things will save a ton of energy if you put solar panels on your roof you can basically wipe out all of your electricity usage during the course of a year geothermal heating and cooling will drastically reduce your bills for those things and and home heating is usually the biggest cost in terms of energy uh, use among homes but there's actually a lot you can do, tasks you can do, habits you can change that will save tons and tons of energy, a lot of it, that don't cost much at all and that, that I think you know, a lot of homeowners just aren't aware of. And we'll get to that in just one second, but something a lot of people are thinking more about these days is solar energy. We're going to talk about that in an upcoming episode because you wrote a whole article about that, but just give us a little taste. What should we know about the uh, solar potential? Yeah, what we found is that the solar panels themselves have become pretty efficient at transferring energy from the sun and making it, you know, turning that into electricity. And the panels themselves have come down in cost. So combined with, you know, those improvements, plus really generous tax incentives available from the federal government and some generous incentives in some states from state governments and utilities uh, in most parts of the U.S., it's pretty convincing to us that you, you know, most homeowners should be looking at installing solar energy systems. The problem is that these systems usually cost anywhere between twelve dollars and $18,000. And so those upfront costs are really prohibitive. 
uh, you know, for for homeowners to do those projects, either they need to a lot of them need will enter into leasing agreements or finance their purchases, which really just increases their costs or makes it more complicated. But in our our, our most recent release on on solar energy systems, we kind of break down all the options and advise people on on what to do and what not to do. And in a lot of areas, if you're planning on staying in your home for four, five, sometimes up to eight years, solar at this point really makes a lot of sense uh, in terms of the energy savings you can get out of it. And if you're looking to save energy, no matter what the cost, solar for sure is for you. That's the way to go. And you can find more about solar on the checkbook.org website, along with this article that we're talking about, 32 Changes You Can Make to Save Energy at Home. Just go to checkbook.org. We're not going to run through all 32, but I want to give listeners a feel for uh, what some of the things they can do. What do you think is the number one most effective thing? Where do you start? Start by looking for leaks. I mean, if you install a solar energy system or a really efficient furnace, you're still wasting money because your home is passively just letting out that heat during the winter and letting cold cold air out during the summer. So the best thing you can do is look for leaks, plug them up. You can actually probably save more by installing weather stripping around your exterior doors than just about anything else you can do. And it's easy and nearly free to do. Other leaks you find can be sealed with foam insulation. You just spray them into the cracks. The trick is to sleuth out all these leaks. You have to find them first. And that sometimes can get complicated. And you know, when you seal them, you're also going to feel better because there's not going to be that cold air rushing in all the time. Right. I mean, if you're feeling drafts during the wintertime, that's a sure sign that you have leaks that you need to address. You know, it might not seem like much, but a little leak here and a little leak there, you know, common spots are, you know, around window AC units or where, you know, hose bibs come through your home, faucets, outdoor faucets are located or electrical boxes uh, around exterior doorways by sealing up these common points, these problems. I mean, it's the equivalent of basically leaving a small window open. And by shutting that window, you're going to save a lot of money and, and increase your comfort, as you say. Many utilities will give you a home energy audit. They'll come to your house and take a look at the place, look for leaks, look for things you can do for free. My utility did that. They came through the house. They must have spent an hour here. They looked at all kinds of things, the insulation in the attic. They looked for leaks. Uh, It's amazing what your local utility might do because they want to cut your energy usage because it saves them money. So you should contact them and see. You absolutely should. That's a good first step. And your mileage in terms of what what they'll offer for free or for only $100 or so uh, is going to vary depending on your utility. Some offer a lot more than others, but even the basic audits you can get, you know, if you're paying on your own, even that might cost you only a few hundred dollars, might be worthwhile, especially if you're just not knowledgeable enough about what to look for. An easy way to check for leaks is to shut all the windows and doors in your home, turn on all your your fans in your bathrooms and in your kitchen, and then just walk around your home with an incense stick and see where the smoke goes. And where it heads toward walls and other points, that's where you have leakage occurring. But auditors can do a little bit more sophisticated testing and they're more knowledgeable and can point out problems. And some, while they're, while they're finding problems, will go ahead and seal them up and solve them for you. And if you put on a little sitar music, you can make pretend you're back in the 60s. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, And then there's more complete audits. If you have an older home and you think it's wasting a lot of energy, and it probably is because it's an older mm-hmm. home, it may be worth spending four or $500 or more to get a complete audit. I actually did that at my old house, and the guy found tons of stuff that was worth fixing. You know, Some of the fixes were expensive. Insulation's expensive. Others were really inexpensive to do and, and worth doing. And you know, a little bit here and a little bit there added up to pretty big savings for me. I spent two grand recently to put some new insulation in the attic they you know they blew it in and i just know over the long haul it's going to wind up saving me money and we're going to just feel a lot more comfortable in the house yeah i mean some improvements in our 32 things article 32 ways to save energy at home some things will give bigger effects than others and you really want to focus your efforts on the things that are cost effective uh and so we can go through some of those here her but you know some improvements are cost effective others tend not to be but also you need to temper everything with you know what is my objective here a lot of homeowners want to save as much energy as they can and it doesn't matter what the cost. They want to do their part. Uh, and so it's really a balancing act. And a lot of these changes, it really depends on what you want to do and what, what you're looking, you know, your objectives. Absolutely. So let's look at a few of the simple things that you suggest that aren't going to cost a lot of money, but may be effective. Yeah. And so we started with looking for leaks. That is key. Start there. Uh, the way your home passively loses energy, just consumes it and loses it during the course of the year. Uh, the other thing to do that's cheap to fix, look for and seal up leaky ductwork. And this is easy to do. It just requires duct tape. To 
to make sure that there's no holes in your exposed duct work. Anywhere you can see ducts, you know, each seam should be sealed up with tape. That'll save you a ton of energy, especially if you have problems with your ducts. The other thing to do is make sure that when you're not using your fireplace, that the flue is closed. Fireplaces and chimneys, they are designed to drag smoke and air up and out of your home. And if the flue's open, it'll continue to do so. You can actually buy these bladders, these balloons you can stuff up in your flue and blow up because even the flues themselves, when they're closed, aren't very efficient at staying closed. And so if you're not using the fireplace, you can do that also. Those are really cheap and will save you a little bit of energy. We joked earlier about putting on a sweater and just turning the thermostat down, but that's actually a big source of savings. If you can mm-hmm. stand to have your thermostat you know, set a little bit warmer during the summer, or a little bit colder during the winter, then you'll see dramatic savings. You'll especially save if you get a programmable thermostat and use it. When we get back to going into offices and homes are vacant during the day, it does pay big dividends to reduce the thermostat during those times. Uh, other easy sources of savings, inefficient lighting, replacing it with efficient light bulbs, the new LEDs that are out there, they are really efficient and they've gotten really good at mimicking the old lighting that we all loved. Uh, You won't notice dramatic differences these days between the new efficient lighting and the old stuff, and they'll just last for a long time. Uh, The other thing you can do, Herb, you mentioned a lot of our electronics, they're drawing energy even though we're not using them. You know, go around your house and just unplug stuff like that VCR you haven't turned on forever because you just don't need it. Even though it may be only using a few dollars worth of electricity each year, it's not worth it. If you have an extra refrigerator or freezer and it's only half full, do what you can to pare down its usage and unplug it, especially really old refrigerators and freezers, you know, the stuff we inherited from parents and they're in our garages and stuff. Those drag a lot of electricity off the grid if you can get rid of those things. I've had a lot of people ask me, do those LED bulbs really last as long as they claim? Uh, You don't even know this, but I actually date my light bulbs. I put a date when I put them up in the fixture just to see because I'm curious. I'm the consumer man. And I've always gotten significantly more than 10,000 hours out of the bulb. I mean, there's going to be a bulb here that fails sooner than, than it should. And maybe take it back for refund. But yes, these bulbs really do in general last the amount of time that the manufacturer tells you they're going to last. So just yeah, yeah. And the designs have got, I mean, it used to be you'd plug these things in and it made you look like a vampire, right? (laughs) Right. Right. (laughs) But they've gotten a lot better. And so, you know, I I think it's a good move now to just replace all your lighting with stuff that's efficient. And if you're not sure of what's proper to put up there, I mean, there are tons of YouTube videos that will tell you. But, you know, the next time you have an electrician out, ask him or her, you know, what's the best bulb for this fixture? They'll gladly tell you. We're talking to Kevin Brassler, the executive editor of Checkbook.org. And straight ahead, we're going to talk about the big stuff, appliances like, oh, I don't know, the furnace and the air conditioner and a heat pump, that sort of thing. You're listening to Consumerpedia. Want to get started? Checkbook has evaluations and ratings for heating and air conditioning contractors, window suppliers, insulation installers, energy auditors, and appliance stores for these seven metro areas. Boston, Chicago, Philadelphia, Seattle, San Francisco, Minneapolis, St. Paul, and Washington, D.C. To find out more, visit checkbook.org. Our advice is always free. Ratings of local services are available with a subscription. If you live in one of these seven areas and haven't joined Checkbook yet, check us out. Get a free 30-day subscription by going to checkbook.org slash consumerpedia. So we spoke about a lot of little things, but there's also a lot of big things in the house that are using energy, different forms, maybe electricity, maybe natural gas, the appliances, and before we get to them, the insulation that keeps the uh, hot air out or the cool air in or vice versa, depending on what season it is. Yeah, I mean, our biggest source of energy use in most homes is heating costs. And in some climates, like in Arizona and stuff, it's cooling costs. But for the most of the U.S., it's what we're using to heat our homes. And therefore, by reducing that line item cost, cost, right, you'll save the most energy. That's really going to have the biggest effects in terms of saving on costs and usage. A lot of people are getting clobbered this year with uh, home heating costs because of the price of natural gas and the price of home heating oil and electricity is going up in some areas. What kind of things can we do to bring the cost down? Yeah, well, so start after you've done, you know, searching for leaks and done the easy things to save on energy. Uh, The next thing to do, which might cost you, right, a few thousand dollars even, but it's worth the money, is to add insulation to your attic if you need to do so. Uh, Most attics in the U.S. need to be insulated. It's either R30 to R49. To give you kind of some perspective, R49 insulation, depending on what you get, can be several feet of depth of insulation in your attic. It seems like a lot, 
but having your attic properly insulated and also any walls and crawl spaces that you can easily access and get insulated will pay big dividends in terms of your savings. So while it might cost, you know, a thousand dollars or more to add insulation to your attic, you'll eventually get that money back. And in many parts of the U.S., you'll get it back pretty quickly within a few years. The other good news with insulation is that there are tax credits available that will help take care of part of your project. You'll get paid back for some of the costs that you've put in. What about new devices such as furnaces and air conditioners? For furnaces, if you have an oil-burning furnace, and those are becoming increasingly rare in most parts of the country, but if you still have one and you can change over to natural gas, that's a move you definitely want to make. Uh, Natural gas is far less expensive to consume than oil. For the rest of us, if you have a really, really old furnace, it's probably worth going ahead and investing in a new one, even if it means uh, having to finance that purchase through the HVAC contractor. For the rest of us, if we have pretty efficient furnaces, usually the thing to do is to wait until those are, are beyond repair, that you need a, a repair that's so expensive that, well, no, you may as well replace the furnace. But when you do so, it almost always makes sense to buy a more efficient unit than the basic models. Uh, in most parts of the U.S., you have to buy it what's called a 78 AFUE rated furnace, which means essentially that it's about 80% efficient. Uh, that still means 20% of the energy it uses basically goes up your chimney instead of being used to heat your home. These days, you can buy furnaces that are almost you know, 99% efficient. And in most parts of the country, it does make sense to pay extra to get a more efficient furnace, uh, say a 95 AFUE furnace. And the reason is, is although that may cost you $1,000 or more than the basic model, you'll get that extra cost back in terms of tax incentives or utility rebates, but really the energy savings you'll get from having a more efficient model. In some parts of the U.S., the rebates and the savings are so much that you almost instantly, within a year, will save the amount of money that you paid extra to buy that more efficient furnace. What about heat pumps? I live here in the Northwest where they're really efficient and they they work really well. And a couple of friends have switched to them and they absolutely love them. A way to really minimize your energy usage is to switch to a really efficient heat pump if you can. The models they sell these days are quite efficient. They can operate at colder temperatures. And so they do make sense in terms of costs because it's a lot less expensive to run an efficient heat pump than it is even a really efficient gas furnace. Kevin, you have a hybrid system in your house with a heat pump. Could you explain how that works? Yeah, basically my heat pump will heat my home until the temperatures outside reach. I think the switchover point is around 28 or 30 degrees. And then at that point, my furnace kicks on to continue heating things. And that's because you know most heat pumps, even the really efficient ones, can only operate under temperatures that are more than 28, 30 degrees or so outside. After that, they just don't become very efficient. And my gas furnace actually becomes more efficient at creating heat, heating my home, than that electric source does. It's called a hybrid system in many parts of the country, that total package of equipment is probably the most cost-effective way to heat homes. The problem is you have to pay a lot of money up front for them because you have to buy both a furnace and a heat pump. Uh, and together, those things you know cost more than just having a regular air conditioner and a furnace. Or and if you're in a part of the country that doesn't even need an air conditioner or a furnace only. And there's something called a ductless heat pump that's popular in Europe. What's that? Yeah, so these are when you're in a hotel room, you'll see these, right? It's like a standalone unit, and there there aren't ducts running all over the hotel necessarily. Uh, you're getting air directly, warm air, cool air, depending on its setting, directly from that unit. And those units can be extraordinarily efficient. Uh, they can operate at very low temperatures. And because they're not wasting a lot of energy moving hot and cold air around your home through the ducts and losing a lot of energy while they do that, a lot of warmth or cold air, if you're having a lot of remodeling work done or you're putting an addition on, those are definitely worth considering. If you're having new construction done, those are worth considering. Uh, the problem is most of us in our existing homes, it's not worthwhile to try to add those as a standalone thing to improve them by adding those units. Up next, what about the windows? Should you replace all the windows in your house? Consumerpedia Fast Facts. One wind turbine can produce enough electricity to power up to 300 homes. LED bulbs are the most energy efficient choice. There are now more than 150 varieties of LED bulbs on the market. Washing machines with an Energy Star label use one fourth less electricity and one third less water than standard models. 
Let's finish up with Windows, a really expensive improvement that can save a great deal of money, but also could not maybe pay itself back. Tell us about those. Yeah, I mean, you will definitely save a lot of energy if you replace old drafty windows with new ones. You know, all the new ones have to have two panes of glass. Most of them are insulated really, really well. And we do lose our homes a lot of energy through the windows during the winter. It just goes through the windows because glass isn't a very good insulator. But despite what window companies and installers might tell you, you won't necessarily get back the investment you put into buying new windows. You know, really efficient windows, they can cost hundreds of dollars per opening, and you're unlikely to get that much savings in terms of energy use over time for the life of those windows. So it's really better to take other steps. If you have old drafty windows and they're uncomfortable or they don't work anymore, that's a really good reason to replace them. If you don't like the way they look, that's a really good reason to replace them. If they're rotting out and you need to replace them, that's fine. But don't just do it because of the energy savings, unless you're willing just to spare any expense to reduce your your use. I would assume if you did that, it might increase the resale value when it comes time to sell the home. Well, it might. I mean, if you know you're going to sell your home in the next few years and you think you might get you know that much more by by installing new windows or sell it faster. Well, maybe that's another reason to do it too. Just keep in mind, we, we've talked about this in previous podcasts, Herb, that you know a lot of contractors are happy to tell you about instant equity, but you know over time you lose that instant equity from these improvements because stuff just gets old. You know, brand new windows today, you can market your home as having brand new windows, but after five years, can you really market it as brand new windows anymore? No, not really. And so the value does decline over time. Just as anything, you know, things depreciate. One thing that uh, is really simple to do and doesn't cost a lot of money, we did it at our house, is uh, window coverings. We just bring down those Verisol shades, whatever they're called, at night, and it creates a barrier, and it locks all that cold air on the other side, on the other side of the window, and doesn't get into the room. I don't have to heat the room as much. Yeah, Herb, that's a great point, and it's one of the, the uh, 32 things in our, our article. You know, window coverings in the summertime, you shut them all. That keeps the sunlight from getting in, right, and making your home even warmer. During the winter time, during the day, you can open up all your shades and drapes and let the sunlight come in. It will help heat your home. And then at night, shut them up again, and you'll get a, a few ratings of R, basically, of insulation against the cold. You know, the one thing that hits me that's different about this topic than many others we talk about is it's not just about getting something good or saving money. It's also what your reason for doing it is. The example being, we're going to have to replace our hot water heater in the next year or so. Do I replace it with natural gas? It's already plumbed and uses natural gas. Or do I switch to electric knowing that our utility is switching to green energy? They're going to get rid of their coal-fired power plants in the next year or so. I'm making a 12-year investment and I'll be using a lot less in cleaner energy and better for the environment for the next 12 years. That's one of the things that gets factored into these energy decisions. Yeah, and as you mentioned, sometimes what gets factored in is just whether you want to play your part in reducing energy use, right? I mean, when we had to replace a heat pump here, I knew that by installing the most efficient heat pump that the company offered, that it was going to cost me thousands of dollars more. And I also knew that we're probably not going to stay in this house long enough for me to really benefit from that extra investment in a financial dollars and cents way. But I also decided, you know what, if I'm going to live in this big barn of a house, I should do what I can to reduce my consumption. I should play my own part, you know, being part of the solution than part of the problem in terms of of fossil fuel use. Uh, And so I opted to spend more, even though I know in the long run, I'm not going to get that extra money back. It doesn't work that way for heat pumps in my region. Well, that's this edition of Consumerpedia. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure you rate, review, and subscribe to us on Apple or Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Remember, we release new episodes every other Thursday. Another way you can support the show is to follow Consumerpedia on Facebook and Instagram and at My Consumerpedia on Twitter. I'm Herb Weisbaum, Checkbook.org. Consumerpedia is a public service of Checkbook.org. We're a unique nonprofit that empowers you, the consumer, to save money and make smarter choices. From auto repair shops to doctors, plumbers to vets, you can count on Checkbook.org to help you find the best services and avoid the worst. Local ratings are unbiased and accurate. That's Checkbook.org.